Howdy, it's Matt and welcome to part two of this series on laminating RC models. Now if you haven't seen part one then what I'll do is in the top right hand corner for you is the little card will pop out, I think it's over there somewhere. Uh, that will pop out and you can go and watch part one uh, where we go and laminate up this uh, FPV flying wing and we go through all the basics. Now, part two is actually a viewer's request which is that you wanted to see more intricate laminating, okay, a uh, trickier laminating, whereas a model like this, like a flying wing, like I said, it's really easy to lam a model like this because you're just dealing with big sheets. However, today is gonna be a real uh, challenge for me personally is because this is all of the white uh, uh, laminate which I've got. So like, like, like we saw in the previous episode, you can get clear laminate, but you can also get colored covering film as well. Uh, and I did buy this roll of white, well what's left of this roll of white, uh, from Hobby King a short time ago. Uh, and this is all I've got left. In fact, there's one a little piece which has fallen down there on the floor. So I've got to go really careful uh, with this. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to see if I can actually get four pieces out of here and get the Elevons covered. Now, just like before, and as we learned in the uh, longer episode, is that we always do the bottom first, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We are gonna be doing our elevons, uh, and we are gonna be doing with like a tricky surface, so we've got, we've got lots of angles on here which we need to deal with. Also, we're really tight on material as well, uh, and the thing to remember is that it's just like before, which is that uh, uh, we need to do the bottom first. Now, one thing which you need to go really careful of, okay, is that this material has a top and bottom side, just like the clear laminate which we were using last time. But uh, when we cut this out, do go careful that you don't go and cut yourself out a mirror image. I've done that before. It's very frustrating when you do that, so do go careful of that. Uh, oh, I also do have the iron here on hot, and if you'd like to know any other uh, any other basic tips about laminating, go and see that previous video, and again, I'll put a link to that at the end of this uh, episode as well. So uh, I am doing my best to try and cons use up as little, but, uh, but cover out this part as much as possible on here, uh, and uh, I'm just gonna hold that there. So preparation is everything here. Now, I think uh, what I am actually gonna go and do uh, is just use my cup of coffee, uh, just to, which may or may not be a good idea. No, that's not the best idea. We use a blowtorch instead. We're gonna use that to hold that still. Uh, and I am just gonna cut out uh, this, uh, well, the first piece which we need to do. Uh, and we only just need it to wrap up around the edge. Again, normally, I wouldn't care and I'd be just be straight in there, cut it off, uh, roughly about right. Uh, but this is the very, very last uh, part of the roll. Uh, and I don't really want to go and buy another roll today. Uh, because the white laminate is, while it gives a brilliant finish, it is probably like being one of the most difficult laminates for me to work with. Because if you put heat anywhere near it, in fact, that reminds me, I need to turn that down a touch. Uh, so I've just turned it down just below uh, medium uh, is that uh, you put heat anywhere near it, it will crinkle up on you uh, at a moment's notice. Well, but not even a you don't even get any notice, it just crinkles on you, which is extremely frustrating. So, I'm gonna go and move that up out of the way and get this piece back. Now, obviously, we're working here on a super clean, tidy surface ish. Uh, now, like I said, we are gonna do bottom first. I know this is the bottom because I've sanded the rear edge of the elevon on the back. Uh, so I know that I've got this the right way round. And I'm gonna pull the backing off as well. Apparently, <laughs> I'm not gonna mention who their name is, but I know I can remember who said it. Apparently someone, when they first started laminating, they, they had such uh, a challenge trying to get this laminate to stick to a model and they had it on full heat and it didn't matter what they do, it just wouldn't stick and they eventually managed to laminate a model. Uh, and I don't even know how they managed to do it because they'd left the backing on the back and actually melted the laminate through the plastic <laughs> to the model. It was not a good job apparently. Um, so yeah, you know who you are. So make sure you peel off the back uh, off the 
uh, so that the sticky side is uh, revealed. Now this is where it gets very tricky because like I said we are on a distinct budget when it comes to uh, this uh, laminate today. So I need to go very, very careful. And what I'm gonna do actually is that I'm just gonna cheat. I'm just gonna, you'll see me here holding this and I'm just gonna tack that corner. I don't know if you just saw it started to crinkle up there as well. And I've just tacked that corner on. And the reason why I'm tacking that corner on is because we need to get it right first time. And there is no going back on this one. So, right, we're in there, it's just like before. Keeping the iron moving at all times. Now really you need to be doing this on a flat surface. Now you may have noticed that this desk is actually made out of pallet wood uh, and I didn't do a very good job of sanding it off and it's not actual level. So that's why I've just put mine on an angle is because I know in each piece individually they went for a planar, a uh, surface planar uh, and uh, I know they're flat whereas they're, they're not all flat and they're not, they're not all the same thickness. Uh, anyway, if you could wind back time I would have probably done them all the same thickness, but uh, it's too late now, which springs to mind. Uh, so there we go, brilliant. Just like what we learned before. Now I am just gonna zoom in on this for you, so you can see what's going on. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, what we want to happen here is that we want this laminate to come up and over, but we don't want it to uh, like come right into in, inside, because you will see, especially with this thicker, thicker laminate, uh, you will see those creases on the inside. So we're gonna try and keep this as neat as possible, uh, and I'm just gonna cut that off uh, about a quarter of an inch away, okay? Uh, now I do need to tidy up this edge as well, like so. Now when it comes to the corners, I'm just gonna crop, cut them off like so, uh, and uh, you'll see that I did leave a little gap and I'm just going to put a little cut in there as well. It just means it's uh, easier to manage on the corners. Uh, again, I'm going to cut that across and then put a tiny little cut in the corner. We have pretty much the same thing going all the way along here. Again, just iron that up. And obviously if you don't have such a beautiful desk you might want to use a, uh, one of those cutting mats. Uh, whereas this desk really is just made out of pallet wood. Uh, and um, yeah, I can just sand it off and clean it up. So, right, uh, obviously if you're doing this on your mum's dining table, don't go cutting straight on the dining table. She will murder you. Right, anyway, come on back. I'm just gonna use a ruler for that long straight edge down here. Brilliant. That's that done. Again, not exactly perfect, but, but it'll be fine. Now, any curved corners as we learnt uh, in a previous uh, video is that what we can do is just put lots of little cuts in there uh, to go put it like so lots of little cuts in there to go around the corners I'm not actually going to do that I'm just going to cut off the corner and then put a little slit in the corner right so doing a piece like this is really well pretty straightforward there's no other words for it like I said laminating is easy uh, the thing to remember is all it does is just take time uh, and uh, if you're not sure what you're doing, you just take your time, don't rush things, and you'll see me here, I'm just working along that back edge of the elevon, this is the part which where it goes and meets the model, I'm not trying to go for the full Monty going all the way over, okay, uh, we are just taking our time, we're just warming up that edge and we're slowly uh, coaxing it to come over, that means that we're going to end up with a fantastic seal uh, on that edge, which we've now got, there we go. I'm just going to pop this down on a flat surface and I'm just going to bend these pieces out, bend this bit over. You know, since it's going over the head, absolutely lovely. I'm going to get all the way down that edge. Job is a good one. Now, do remember, keep, shut the uh, cuttings off the desk because you don't really want them sticking to the iron. Uh, and when they do, they really do weld, which is rather frustrating. Uh, just going to focus up on this end. Again, not trying to go for the full Monty straight away. We are just bending it over. There we go. We've got it part way. And then we can go and get that trimmed over on the edge. Oh, uh, just a quick note, something which I didn't actually cover in the beginning, is that you may be wondering, Matt, why is your Elevon white? And uh, the thing is, is that I was going to spray paint it and then put some clear laminate on the top. But then I realised I had some white laminate down there, so happy days. Uh, that's why we're using uh, white laminate on there, because I didn't realise I actually had any. Uh, so, right, let's keep moving again. Slowly working around that edge, taking my time now. And this one's a bit weird because it did have a short piece in there. 
uh, and I'm just going to bend that piece over, bring that over tight. There we go. Uh, and one thing which I haven't actually covered is surface preparation. Now this is balsa wood, uh, so any uh, porous material will need to be cleaned up first and make sure uh, if it's balsa that you're going to you want to probably just give it a quick sand first and wipe the dust off. Uh, a dusty surface won't obviously uh, it's not going to be a good sticking surface. Now I have just realized that I've made a mistake then if you can see here on this level uh, but there is a point about here where it actually moves uh, the angle on it changes. Now it looks is actually quite defined here in the uh, thing so all I'm going to do I've just got in there tagged it with the knife and uh, we can then bend it over uh, and we won't end up with a crease appearing uh, in that edge so there we go and again you see no point here am I rushing I'm just taking my time uh, and just working with the material uh, and I'm not trying to fight it I'm, I'm not trying to rush uh, like, like I said, on bigger surfaces you can pick up the pace, but smaller surfaces like this, it really does pay dividends to uh, just take your time uh, and frankly enjoy it. Uh, and it's just like, well, like I said in the, the first one, if you can iron a shirt, you can laminate a model. There isn't anything particularly complicated about laminating at all. It is just a confidence and, excuse me, uh, an experience thing. So just coming up to the end piece, all nice and straightforward. It's just Folding that up and over, and we'll just get the lip over, and there we go, there's one side done. I don't say if you can see how glossy that is on the camera, uh, that's come out really well. And I just noticed there's a bit of an air pocket, so I am just going to quickly go over the top of it. Now, normally, what I do uh, with all parts, it doesn't matter if it's a small part like this uh, or a whole model, is that once I finish laminating, I will tend to go back over with a higher heat uh, and then really make sure that the glue is stuck down uh, just to, to just this peace of mind to be honest and again another long term thing is that maybe you hit a model in the ground uh, and the laminate kind of like bubbles and tears away from the surface underneath then just get your iron out and stick a bit more heat on it and it will stick itself back down again uh, it's really versatile stuff to say the least right so let's zoom ourselves back out again and like I said, I am really tight on material here, uh, so I am doing my best to uh, make sure that I don't waste any. Now, I've just noticed that that is a long straight edge, so I think it makes more sense for me to do that. Now, I'm just going to quickly eye up the other two pieces which I need to cut out here, which I think I can do it. So I just need to be really careful with this one. Uh, so I am going to be a little bit scrimpy uh, on the material which I'm using. Now, Annoyingly, that's not a particularly straight edge. So I'm just going to come down a few mil on the back edge. Now I'm going to hold that still. And I'm going to grab that blowtorch uh, and I'll hold that out of the way. Let the iron out of the way as well. Now normally I wouldn't be so um, skimpy on this, but like you've seen, I've only got a tiny bit of material, uh, and uh, that is a bit of a pain in the rear. So I am just going to. Normally, what I'd say is that you want to wrap over uh, by say. Uh, five five millimeters, something like that, an eighth of an inch or a bit more, something like that, just to uh, make sure that you've got a seam on here. But I can't be that luxurious on this one because I do have a severe lack of material, and I'm just going really slowly but surely, just trying to keep it an even cut all the way around. This is where I find a screw hole underneath, uh, which uh, screws things up. There we go, we're looking good so far. And not that bothered about the end. Okay, and remember what I've done here, I've put face down, okay, so the face which I want to cover is underneath here. And uh, let me just move that, tear that out of the way. The piece which I want is that that's gone face down through the tear off, the peel off, Okay, so that when we turn it over, it's the right way around. It's not to mirror an image, a mirror image. Like I said, I've done this too many times and gone, ah, oh, balls, it's the wrong way round. Uh, and I'm sure you would do it. I, I'm sure I would do it again. Uh, it's just the way things are. So do look out for it. But like I said, I, I've, made that mis I've made that mistake numerous times. And I'm sure you will make that mistake numerous times as well, even knowing that you're going to make a mistake doing that. 
if that makes any sense. Right, so I'm just going to hold that still. Again, like before, again, this is unfortunately very slippy material to work to. I'm just trying to hold it still so I can tack it in place. There we go. Right, we're in. And um, we're off. There we go. Again, turning it around, trying to choose a, uh, keeping in line with a flat surface, obviously, uh, is that I'm sure you, you can do this on your desk or the kitchen table. Uh, just make sure the surface which you're doing this on is flat uh, and I am just I am putting a bit of pressure on it to be honest uh, really I'm just just pushing it down and again I'm doing my best just to pull might end up with a crease on this one no I managed to turn yeah <laughs> it was going off on a slight angle at the end I didn't think I was going to be able to cover the top entirely then uh, but we got away with that one that's classed as happy days okay Right, I'm just going to tidy up this edge. Again, all we want to do is just get this edge to go around and to tack on the sides. Cleaning up the corners, just crossing those off. That one's fine. Again, there'll probably be a cut required in the middle of there somewhere. Not really sure, so I'll stick two in. Uh, and I'm just going to tidy up that end piece as well. Do a little cross cut. Zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Just cut that corner off. Uh, and then I'm just going to get in here, again keeping the iron down on just below medium, again that's because of this white laminate, it is a bit of a biatch to work with, it, it is, yeah you, this is why I was saying, when, like when you first start laminating, you start about this temperature because you don't know how your laminate is going to react, and then once you work out that's, that's not hot enough, you can crank it up a bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've had too many dealings with this white foot. I've done a whole reel, a whole roll of it, uh, and uh, uh, I know that it can be a little bit fussy, to say the least. Well, I know it's extremely fussy with heat. Uh, is that too much, and it just crinkles up. It's, it's a real challenge to work with. So this is why I was saying the the coloured laminate, uh, sorry, the clear laminate, uh, is probably the best laminate to start with because it's cheap uh, and. Uh, it doesn't matter if you make the odd mistake because you've still got another like 70 meters or 74 meters worth of a roll uh, to to use on your model. You can just tear it off and do it again. So again, just like before, I'm just there uh, working the edge and then slowly bending it over. And uh, there we go. Nice edge on there. And again, the reason why we were doing bottom first is because with the bottom. We want the, we, we don't, we, sorry, the reason why we do bottom first is because then we end up with a flawless and seamless top there, which is the, the layer which you and um, your fellow pilots see. Uh, but mainly you, because you know that the, uh, if you've done it the other way, that there was going to be a seam on the top, and we try and keep away from seams. Oh, also talking about seams as well, uh, try not to put too much, uh, again, on a bigger, like, spread. Don't try and put the iron too close to it or to there for too long uh, because it will, uh, the glue will peel out underneath it. So there we go, I'm quite impressed with that. I just need to tidy up that end piece. That's got it really well actually. You can see there's one or two little air bubbles in there, I'm not worried about those to be honest. I'm sure that with when I put that on foot, again, I've got an air bubble just here. And again, I don't know how well this is going to come out white on. Where is it? There, there. There. Ah, look, you can see it there. All I'm going to do is just poke it with the knife. I've poked it with the knife, put the iron on it, and it's gone. And you wouldn't even know that I've poked it with the knife. And I've just spotted another one as well. It's one of the beauties of laminating onto balsa is that you always get air bubbles in it and I'm just there stabbing it with a knife until the air bubbles go. The zoom bar. Yeah I've got the zoom working today. <laughs> Happy days. Right. None of it there. Right. Brilliant. I'm happy with that. Oh just noticed the again do just check over I've just noticed there was an air bubble down the side as well. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So there is our, well, one of our elevons. I'm gonna go on and do the second one. Uh, I do have a bit of a challenge, I'm from very limited on material. Uh, the thing to note, what well, the, the bits to take for you to take away from this video. 
okay, is that number one, that that has got a slight bit of warp in it. Am I bothered? No, not really, because on the back of the model, uh, it will. What I can do is heat up this opposite side uh, and it will pull this side tight uh, and I'll just keep going until it straightens itself out. So yeah, it's got a little bit of warp in there. I'm also not that bothered about it because I know when we laminate it to the side of the model uh, is that that will help uh, straighten out any slight curve which we have uh, in the surface here. So anyway, getting back to my point. Laminating more complex parts is actually exactly the same process. We just start from the bottom and work our way up. So we did the bottom. Remember, when you put that down on the sheet, make sure you put the, the face which you want to cover down on the sheet and then you're cutting through the material. So you've got the sticky stuff, uh, which, so uh, how it attaches to the actual surface. Remember, we mentioned about those mirrored surfaces that will catch you out. Uh, we did the bottom first and then we do the top. We do the bottom, we just go round the edges, overlap by a seam. You probably can't even see that tiny little edge there, that seam. In fact, I'm going to zoom right in and see if you can pick it up. I don't know, if, is that going to focus? Might be a bit too close. There we go. I don't know even if you can see that seam down there. Okay, it is nigh on invisible. Uh, and the thing is, is that once we uh, got this on a model, uh, and you've walked away from it, like all chucked it in the sky more than three foot uh, or a meter away. Nobody will see that on there and it gets very, very tiny on the edge. Anyway, come back to my point. Bottom first, then do the top. Uh, when it comes to the edges, uh, just trim, try and get a uniform edge all the way around the outside. Uh, when it comes to corners, my biggest tip for that is just cr cross cut the corner so you can fold one side over and then the other side over. Uh, when working with the edges, you take your time. You, you saw me, we were just easing her along the edge. We weren't just trying to go, whoa, straight over. That's never going to work out very well. Uh, we are just easing the edge, and then we're working over, and off we go, round like so. We just take our time. Uh, and again, if you do end up with a little bit of warpness, and again, if that, to me, just put a bit of heat on the back of there, uh, it is bouncing up and down a touch, but it's like half as uh, bad as what it was. Uh, well, twice as better than what it was, if that makes sense, I don't know. I'm just heating up the opposite side, uh, and that will straighten it. Ah, look. Can you hear that now? It is only maybe two millimetres up, something like that. Uh, a fraction uh, of an inch. Now, I'm getting bubbles appear on here, because I have cranked up the heat. So, I'll tell you what, while I'm here... Again, dealing with bubbles. Don't panic, bubbles are so expected, especially if you're working with wood. Uh, and that will happen. And I'm getting another one over here, so I'm just gonna stab it. You just stab it with your knife. So in fact, we've actually learned quite a lot in this uh, episode on laminating. And ironically, I've done it too much. It's going the wrong way now. Uh, so do go careful. <laughs> and I've just put much more heat in that, and I've just noticed those two pieces have come up. So. Yeah, I, I, I should have quit while I was ahead. So I'm going to go on and play with that later. From myself, Matt, I want to say a massive thank you to you for taking the time to watch this video. The reason being is that laminating can seem very daunting in the beginning. As we've just been alert here, it's not scary. It's not hard. We only need basic tools, a sharp blade. Don't ever skimp on the blade. Always make sure you've got a sharp blade. A straight edge available to you. A nice flat, dust-free surface. Uh, and an iron which is not on too high of a heat. And we just take our time. And remember, the biggest tip which I can give you, bottom up or from the back of the model to the front of the model. That's the easiest way of working. Uh, and uh, I will be doing some more complex parts with you. Uh, I've got uh, some wings to do on a nano talon. We'll be doing that. And also we'll be lam laminating the spare nano talon, which I've got up there on the shelf. Really tricky, awkward, intricate model. Uh, and that is gonna be a fantastic one for you to learn from because that is not an easy model to laminate. Uh, and it does take a little bit of thought, a little bit of preparation on there, but it is actually relatively straightforward because you just break it down. You work from the back of the model to the front of the model, and it's as straightforward as that. So for myself, Matt, I sincerely hope that you found this video helpful. If you have, do me a favor, press the thumbs up. Any questions or comments, let me know. 
in the comments section underneath this video. And as always, from myself, Matt, cheerios!